we want to look at three factors that affect oxygen bonding to hemoglobin. What is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is a protein on red blood cells. That's why red blood cells are thought to carry oxygen because the oxygen bonds to the hemoglobin. So there's a few things that are going to affect the amount of oxygen that bonds to hemoglobin. This is the alveoli and this is a capillary. If we're looking at the alveoli and the capillary, this must be the pulmonary circuit because this is taking place in the lungs. And we want to look at the air coming in to the alveoli. The air coming into the alveoli is going to have a higher amount of oxygen than what would be in the bloodstream. It has a lower amount of carbon dioxide and the temperature is going to be less than, we'll say 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Whenever blood is returning from the tissues, the blood goes into the lungs. It's going to be deoxygenated blood, so it has low amounts of oxygen. It has higher amounts of carbon dioxide, and it's pretty warm. It's going to be somewhere around 100.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, as the blood enters the lungs, it's going to undergo a couple of changes. Number one, this is the first change that affects the oxygen binding the hemoglobin. Number one is diffusion. In diffusion, this oxygen that, that is carried in, through, carried in with the air is going to diffuse into the bloodstream. So oxygen enters the bloodstream by simple diffusion. Okay, if your oxygen in the atmosphere is going to be about 20% of the air that you're inhaling, then you would have by that example, you would have 10 molecules of oxygen entering the bloodstream. Let's say though that the air that you're inhaling is say 30% oxygen. So you would see that you have 15 molecules of oxygen entering the bloodstream and that's how supplemental oxygen increases the oxygen in the bloodstream. Number two, naturally, not being on um, supplemental oxygen, a few other things, two other things can happen to increase the amount of oxygen binding the hemoglobin. The first one is temperature. Um, hemoglobin has a stronger affinity for oxygen in a cooler environment. Hemoglobin will bind to more oxygen in a cooler environment. Okay, so looking at the blood that's coming back from the tissues, we can see that it's 100.8. The air that you inhale is less than 98.6 or 98, and so the temperature of the blood is going to cool, which means that the hemoglobin in the bloodstream is going to be more likely to bond to more of that oxygen. So more oxygen comes into the bloodstream because of the temperature being cooler and hemoglobin pulling that oxygen from the alveoli into the bloodstream. Number three, the pH. Hemoglobin bonds better to oxygen in a higher pH. Okay, what, what determines the pH? The carbon dioxide determines pH. Okay, so whenever we come over here to the bloodstream, you see that you have high amounts of carbon dioxide whenever blood comes to the lungs. So this carbon dioxide would leave the bloodstream. And so that means that you have a decreased amount of carbon dioxide that would decrease the hydrogen ion and increase the pH. So as the pH is in the lungs, as the blood is in the lungs, the pH is going to increase and that's going to cause even more oxygen to come into the bloodstream. At the tissues, what changes are going to take place at the tissues? Um, we'll go here with the blue color. This blood here comes out and it's going to go into this blood vessel and this blood vessel, that capillary, is going to take the blood to the tissues. This would be the systemic circuit that we're looking at. The blood going into the systemic circuit is going to be high in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide. The temperature is going to be cooler going to be somewhere around 100 point, let's say 100.2, something like that. And then the pH is going to be um, 
I mean, I'm sorry, 7.45. Sorry. The pH is still high, so it's 7.45. It irritates me whenever I can't get it. Okay, so blood comes in. The oxygen is going to diffuse into the tissues. Especially if this is a muscle, it's going to have myoglobin on it, right? So myoglobin is pulling that oxygen into the muscle. The carbon dioxide is going to leave the muscle and go into the bloodstream. Okay, the muscle tissues are warm. They are metabolically active, so they're going to be very warm. So this is going to warm the temperature of the blood up to, say, 100.8. At 100.8, remember hemoglobin likes to bind to oxygen in a cooler environment. So hemoglobin is not going to have a strong of an attraction for oxygen. And so oxygen will let go of hemoglobin. And so more oxygen goes into the tissues. Whenever the carbon dioxide exits the tissues, this increases the carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. It decreases the pH. So the pH now is going to be around 7.35. Hemoglobin binds better to oxygen in a higher pH. So this means that those oxygen molecules binding the hemoglobin in the bloodstream, more of them will become a little bit looser, not have as great, not have as great an affinity for the oxygen. So myoglobin is in those tissues, um, the warm tissues, the muscles, and it's trying to pull that oxygen out of the bloodstream. So that what that is what makes more than just half of the oxygen leave the bloodstream and go into the tissues. So now you're going to have blood go back to the lungs and it's going to have the same characteristics um, as this blood right here. It's going to have low amounts of oxygen, high carbon dioxide, it's a higher temperature, and it's also going to have a lower pH. I should have written that up there, 7.35 there. Okay, and those are three factors that affect oxygen binding. Keep in mind for the respiratory system, this is going to be number two and number three. Number two, this is um, external respiration. External respiration is actually described in the pulmonary circuit on this one here, everything that happened in the lungs. And then number three was uh, or is internal respiration. And the internal respiration takes place at the systemic circuit, so that's everything that happens at the tissues.